All right, so here is a tutorial. This is just kind of a, an abbreviated version of the sketch in line art. You can check the description because I go more in depth about these steps. But for this video, I'm more focusing on the coloring because there's a lot of steps involved. And I also want to apologize in advance for how awkward I am. Like, I keep flubbing my narration. This is probably like the 15th time I've redone this. Okay, well, maybe I'm exaggerating, but the point is I'm, I'm just super awkward. So <laughs> please bear with me. I'm probably going to do more. Because I really want to get back into doing videos, but my computer is kind of a turd and does not like to cooperate with me most of the time, especially when it comes to making videos. But I'm going to stop rambling about that. So I was just doing the basic level of shading here. Um, I use a lot of layers, so here's another layer. I like to go back and adjust the, the first uh, iteration of shading, if you will. Like right here, I'm using overlay. Or at least I was, but it's like a more vibrant color than the base shading color. Because you really want to add a lot of variation. And then I use like the color sampler tool so that it's almost the same color as the base layer. Because you really want the shading to be subtle. Except for like in certain places as we're going to see in a minute. You want... You really want to set the stage for the darker shaded areas because that's what's going to pop out the most when you look at this. So um, adding shading to the nooks and crannies. Like, I think there's there's lots of opportunities for darker shading because um, of all the little layers of petals. It's kind of fun. That's why I like doing flowers is just they're fun to shade. I like doing it. I could do it for hours. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm just gonna wait till it skips ahead. So I told you I'm awkward, sorry. <laughs> so, there. Now I make it even darker, but only in a few select spots, and then the rest is just going to be more of a lighter color, but not... Don't make it disappear, but you still want to be able to see it, you know? Um, I guess it takes practice, but it's pretty fun to add like that variation. And then you can make it kind of lighter underneath. Like this um, lighter color, it's below the first shading layer. And then I like to add like some gradients. I had two of them. This is the first one. This is just normal blending mode, 15% opacity. And then I do it again, but this time I put on multiply because it makes it like a richer color. And then I start doing the sparkles. This is with uh, overlay. It's blue and yellow. You want to use bright colors because if you go too dark, um, then it, it might not show up correctly. And it's really about trial and error. It's really fun to see like how colors interact on overlay because there's like a bunch of different possibilities. And it's just fun to experiment because you can really make things all colorful and sparkly. And you're going to notice I'm doing the sparkles again. Like I do it in usually like three rounds because the sparkles I make them really low opacity because you want it to be subtle except for like a few really distinct bright specks as you can see here around round three these are going to be the most visible specks and the rest are kind of subtle but you want to be uh you want to use these last sparkles like really sparingly because that that what's that's what makes them special and then I go on to the line art. Like some people say, my it almost looks like I don't use line art. It's because um, I never keep the line art black. Like I always try to make it blend in with the picture, cause um, I think it looks really nice. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm having an awkward moment here. But you can kind of see how I blend it in, and then I skip ahead because it got kind of redundant after a while. But, like, I add, like, a stroke. Like, I use different colors, like, darkest in the middle, and it gets uh, lighter on the outer layers. But I like doing this because it helps the line art pop, as you can see. And then um, you can adjust the multiply stroke with, like, appropriate colors. Because, like, it was muddy before, and this video is getting ahead of me. So, 
what I'm doing here is I'm adding like high highlights with luminosity and shade. I'm using a light salmon pink, if you will. And I like to add like these bright outlines to um, in the direction of the light source. So my light source is like the upper right. It's kind of distracting because I keep flipping. But and another thing I'm doing in this is when I taper, I like to add like these little dashes. That's just a personal preference. You don't have to do that. I think that really depends on your own personal style, but I do encourage experimentation and trying different things out because eventually you're going to find something you really love doing. So then I just skipped ahead a bit here. Like this step was kind of unnecessary in my opinion. It's like, I'll just add a background. But after that, we go back and we add some, uh, what do we call it? Soft screen, a glow. That's it. A glow. Cause I, I love making things all pretty and glowy. Like you could see, I added like a, a main glow and then I add like little mini glowing spots where the specks are. And then I add glow to like the, the white outlines, but you want to be selective about which outlines you make glow. Like don't go overboard, like try to keep it to the really prominent lines. Cause that that's what will make it more impactful. Like, you know, exactly where to put them. And of course, all these screen layers are going to be like really subtle. You don't want it to be overly bright. And then here's just me adjusting the colors in Photoshop. I made it way too fast, but I'd like to do a tutorial on this because uh, it's a really subtle color adjustment, but it really helps. Like it's basically uh, increasing the red blue contrast. And then I'm just and then this last step is kind of like a bonus step. Like I, you can blur like the background objects to make it slightly out of focus for kind of like a bokeh effect. No, that's not it. Not bokeh, but you know what I mean? It's like out of focus and I guess the video finished. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. Thank you for listening to my rambling and I hope to do more videos.